Hello, and welcome to Unify's webinar on maintaining Oracle Forms applications after conversion to Java. This is your host, Matt Brunquell. Before we get started, I want to review a few housekeeping items. Uh, for those of you new to Unify Corporation, we're a publicly traded software company that's been in business for over 30 years, and we're known for being the first to deliver a relational database in the Unix environment. Since then, we've delivered development software products that run across different databases and platforms really geared towards building and modernizing business applications and to the business application developer who places a premium on productivity over low-level coding. Now today our business has expanded into conversion solutions like the one we're talking about today uh, for modernizing business applications and other technologies as well as archiving and the archiving surround application data as well as email archiving and e-discovery. Now we encourage questions on the webinar and the way you do that is to use the Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar. It's the button with a question mark and there's also a chat button but it just makes it easier for Lorraine and I to look in one panel, the Q&A panel, for the questions just to make sure that we address all of them. Now I mentioned Lorraine Ruddy who is our Director of Customer Services in our Oracle practice and she'll be driving the demo portion today and I asked her to pipe in during the presentation where appropriate as she has plenty of experience working with our customers on Oracle Forms modernization projects. So with that, let's go ahead and review our agenda. So let me get in here and click on through. So the objective for today's webinar is to provide you with the answers to some of the more common concerns facing organizations looking to ma maintain their Oracle Forms applications converted to Java. And we'll start with an introduction that includes an overview of Unify CypherSoft and review the four key focus areas for maintaining Oracle Forms applications converted to Java. These areas include change management, application architecture, business logic, and the presentation layer. Now we'll follow this with a demonstration so you can see how easy it can be to convert and maintain an Oracle Forms application in Java. And then this will be followed by the Q&A session. So CypherSoft is a wholly owned subsidiary of Unify Corporation and it has a very established and very successful practice for modernizing Oracle Forms applications. CypherSoft is a member of the Oracle Modernization Alliance or as it's also known as the OMA. And the OMA is an Oracle initiative to help customers modernize their applications and infrastructure. And CypherSoft is the only member of the OMA with a focus on Oracle Forms. Customers have built very successful applications in Oracle Forms, but what we're seeing out there is they're looking to modernize in today's technologies to keep them relevant. And there are several options for them that include really, I would say, three main ones. Web enabling the application through an upgrade to Forms 10G or 11, uh, rewriting the application, or automated conversion. Now, each of these options has their pros and cons to consider depending on the customer requirements. Uh, the good news is, at CypherSoft, we offer services around all of these options, and choosing the right path is really a webinar topic in itself. Uh, but for today's webinar, we're going to focus on maintaining an application after an automated conversion to Java, although you'll see some of it would apply to the other options as well. So these are the four key focus areas. Uh, the first one, change management. Uh, business applications uh, relevant to the organization that, you know, they're looking to convert um, are typically also active because they're looking to convert them and modernize them because they're important to the organization. And so typically there are new requirements and mod modifications ongoing. So we'll look at what's the process for handling these changes once converted. Uh, the second focus area is application architecture. How is the code structured? Uh, in the converted Java application. Uh, the third area is business logic. What are the considerations for the converted business logic? And some things there to consider uh, um, that you may or may not have thought about. And then the presentation layer. What are the considerations for the converted presentation layer and how is it handled or maintained differently on the Java side than it might have been in Oracle Forms? So we'll go ahead and look into each of these areas in a little more detail now. So when Unify is involved in a conversion project, 
we assign a project manager and we apply a set of project governance, I'll call it processes, that include communication, schedule tracking, scope management, uh, issue and risk management, as well as change management. And whether you're doing an automated conversion, rewrite, or even an upgrade, having this structure and set of processes is essential. Now, we're not going to go into all of this detail on the project governance processes here. Uh, many of you will probably have your own set of processes around it. But it's worth taking a moment on the change management uh, piece of this as it relates to maintaining and extending an application during the conversion as well as after the conversion. So during and after a conversion project, there will likely be requests for additions, deletions, or modifications to the application. This illustration on this slide here outlines a sample process. It's the one we use to help identify the cost in both effort and impact to the schedule um, of a conversion project for requested changes. And there are seven steps in the process. Identify and document, assess impact, and prioritize those in, in prioritize them, estimate the required effort, approve, disapprove the changes, um, assign responsibility, monitor and report progress, and communicate change resolution. So again, some of you may already have your own process in place. This is just uh, as an example of what we use when we're involved in a project. But related to change management during the conversion, the thing I really want to point out here is there are some Oracle Forms constructs which are not suitable to automated conversion to Java. So when you're, you're looking at the automated conversion option, there is no silver bullet that you push the button and it automatically converts 100% of your Oracle Forms application. Um, how, again, you want to automate as much of it as you can, but there are going to be some constructs just not suitable to that. What's kind of nice to help address the change management for those constructs that aren't suitable to automated conversion is in the CyberSoft solution we're going to show you today, it includes an analyzer, which really helps identify and document those Oracle Forms constructs uh, that aren't automatically converted. And this really gives you the ability to kind of foresee and plan and estimate those types of changes, which you know you would run into in any of these types of projects prior to even beginning the project. So we'll now move on to the second focus area, which is the application architecture. And most customers who choose the automated conversion option are looking for a cheaper and faster way than a rewrite to deploy their applications into Java. However, they also have to consider how will the application be maintained in Java. And this graphic illustrates some of the keys to creating a path for the developers involved in a conversion project, whether they're, they're the original forms developers or um, they're the Java developers who weren't necessarily involved originally in the Oracle Forms applications, but because uh, the application is being converted to Java, they're the ones that are going to be responsible for it moving forward. So in addition to producing clean Java code, keeping the file structure of the components and objects organized much as they were in Oracle Forms really provides a reference point both for the original Forms developers if they're going to be involved as well as the Java developers um, just in a way that they can follow. And, and what I mean by this is for Oracle Forms developers, this really um, eases the learning curve into Java and makes it possible for them to be very involved in the maintenance and extending of the app moving forward. Um, for the Java developers who really are accustomed to low-level programming or lower-level programming than Oracle Forms, it really provides a higher-level view um, of what can be a very, as, as you know, if you work with Oracle Forms, can provide a higher level view of a very complex database-driven business application that they now have to maintain and extend. So I, wanna, I wanted to kind of give you this, set the context for this, but let's look at what we're talking about here in a little more detail. So the composition of the Java objects, as well as the layout of the directory structure, um, in this case, we're showing you kind of what we do with our conversion solution, which we'll be demonstrating later, is really designed to make the maintenance as easy as possible for the Java developer as well as the forms developer. All business logic and properties are stored in the same kind of hierarchical structure found in the forms environment. So, you know, just to set it here, you know, a form contains blocks and blocks have items. 
and each object has its own level in the directory structure where its Java fi file and child component folders are located. So the directory naming convention is similar, um, although it's in Java, in this case, it's lowercase with underscores removed. So what we mean by that is um, the Java file naming convention will remove the underscores. Um, it makes the leading character uppercase uh, still, but then the rest of it becomes the lowercase. And uh, actually, maybe we can show an example of this in the um, in the demo. I'll have I'll have Lorraine point that out. But basically, what the point we're getting to here is um, you're going to be able to recognize the the constructs um, if you're familiar with the Oracle Forms application. Uh, because it's going to be having the same kind of naming conventions, which really will enable um, quick navigation of the directory structure as well as the generated code. Now, this is a screenshot of the converted Summit application, which we'll be showing in the demonstration. So the Summit application contains three forms, customers, orders, and pick. And if you look in the, uh, in the, um, at the screenshot here, you can see those. Uh, down in here. There's the customers, orders, and then pick is down here. The orders is expanded a little bit. So the orders forms has six blocks, uh, control, date button block, date control block, S inventory, S item, S org. And block level Java classes are found in the, in the corresponding folders. And finally, all the items for the block are stored in their own directory beneath the block, and the same naming convention is used throughout. So you've got this similar application architecture. Let's talk about the third and fourth areas of focus, uh, the business logic and the presentation layer. So on um, the third area, the maintaining the business logic, you, uh, I've got three bullets up here. And the first line refers to adding and modifying components. And examples of these component items include alerts, triggers, blocks, items, windows, and canvases. And a key area often overlooked when converting Oracle Forms applications or rewriting them is the Oracle Forms framework. The framework in Oracle Forms automatically handles things used repeatedly in Oracle Forms applications like trigger execution logic, opening forms, setting focus, alerts, uh, synchronization between fields on the screen and fields in the database, and etc. Actually, it could go on with a much longer description. So providing this framework is what Oracle gave Oracle Forms developers such a high level of productivity. These details were transparent, so the developer could really just focus on maintaining their own business logic uh, for the application. So in a conversion to Java or any other low-level programming language, these basic components are still needed for every Oracle Forms application. So recreating the basic components to this framework itself would require a lot of low-level coding uh, just to handle those basic operations, even before focusing on the business logic of the application itself. The Cybersoft solution you see today includes the equivalent of that Oracle Forms framework in Java. And these are hundreds of Java classes and several libraries, um, all built using standard Java, using programming best practices. And these libraries are prefer referred to as the Express Libraries, which is the second bullet there. And, and customers that have worked with this have measured up to a 90% reduction in cost and time versus a rewrite thanks to the underlying components of these express libraries. And the Java source code for all of these libraries are included um, when you're using this Cypersoft uh, solution to do the conversion. The customer gets all of the, the Java source code to those libraries so that they can maintain and extend them themselves independent of Unify. Uh, once the conversion is done. Um, in addition, in those libraries, there are some uh, traces that can be turned on and off so that you can actually uh, monitor performance and, and track certain behaviors um, that's going on in the communications uh, so that if you want to, you know, extend them or change them or do what you need to do to, to improve that framework over on the Java side, you have that ability to do so. Now, on the presentation layer, uh, kind of related, but the, the fourth one is 
the fourth, when I say fourth one, the fourth area of the focus, in addition to the framework in Oracle Forms, you know, in Oracle Forms, one could use a WYSIWYG editor to maintain and modify the presentation layer. And those accustomed to this in Oracle Forms typically find that maintaining the presentation layer in a Java IDE like, J like JDeveloper requires much more manual effort or coding, whether it's in Java, JSP, or some of the other uh, presentation layers you might want to do it in. Um, it's, it requires a little more, uh, more effort, if you will. And what the illustration above is, is showing a visual editor, visual editor option that we have in the Cypressoft solution that can be used to maintain the presentation layer much in the same way as it was done in Oracle Forms. And we'll show this to you in the demo, but, you know, just as an example here, you can see that there's a properties palette, things like that, that you were, how you typically maintain that presentation layer um, in Oracle Forms. Just makes it a lot easier and lets you spend a lot less time in, um, messing with the positioning of fields and, and, and just kind of doing the little polishing that you want to do to really uh, get the application to look just right in Java. And, and it's amazing how much time people will spend doing that. This, this alleviates a lot of it, but the reason they do spend all that time is they're trying to get it just right so that the user experience um, is a positive one in the conversion because, and there's two reasons for that. One is, they want to minimize any retraining and disruption um, to the end users using the application and the conversion. They want to get it over to the new Java-based platform as quickly as possible and then, you know, look at what can we do to modify and extend it longer term. But the other, th other thing, too, is they're trying to um, make it as clean as possible so that uh, the users adopt the new application and, uh, you know, they don't fight it because they're so used to using the older one. Um, so, again, we'll, we'll show this to you in the demonstration. This option is great for both browser-based and desktop-based presentation layers in Java, although um, we currently don't have it available for uh, one of our options, and that's where you can um, display the presentation layer in uh, Oracle ADF. So we don't have this editor available for if you're going to be deploying in that presentation layer um, in ADF, but uh, for the other presentation layers that um, you can do with our uh, conversion tool, um, this is an option for you. Now, those were the four key areas, and what I thought we'd do now is demonstrate uh, conversion to show some of the concepts we've been talking about. So some key points to keep in mind during the demonstration is we're going to convert uh, the Oracle Summit application, which I referred to earlier. Um, it won't be as complex as some of your forms applications. Uh, certainly it will be, you know, you, usually folks that have a big one will have anywhere from simple to moderate to very complex. But this um, does have menus, libraries, business logic, in addition to those three forms we talked about, or in those three forms. Um, what we're going to show is a full conversion, but uh, I want you to note that you can choose to just do pieces. So, for example, you could just convert the PL SQL in your application. Or, uh, once converted, you could just convert the presentation layer into a different option. So, I, I talked about, you know, the, a browser option, the Oracle ADF, the Java desktop client. You can, you could actually deploy this to different, those different types of clients and, and just choose to, convert into those different presentation layers for the presentation piece of the conversion. Um, you, well, what we'll do, though, is uh, we'll look at the converted code so you can see uh, the similar application architecture and structure with that full conversion. And then um, I'm kind of bopping around a little bit here because I was talking about the presentation layer. What the presentation layer will show in this one is um, in a browser, and it's going to be a like-for-like like, uh, look and feel to the original Summit Oracle Forms application. But I want you to know we have those other presentation layer options, and we can even, um, what we've done in some cases, is use customer-defined templates for those wanting a new look and feel for their converted applications. And uh, again, we're just going to show the, a like-for-like like in a browser, but uh, that way we can show you how you can maintain it in a WYSIWYG editor much as, as, as it was done in Oracle Forms. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Lorraine Ruddy uh, to do the demonstration portion. 
Thanks, Matt. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my desktop, and we'll go ahead and um, walk through some of the things that um, Matt has led us through this morning with the presentation. Um, to start with, um, we'll just briefly walk through the conversion um, of the Summit application. The application that Matt mentioned, um, just a small Oracle application with, um, it's, a, it's a Forms 6i application, has three forms in it and a couple of libraries. So I just wanted to show you what the application looked like uh, before we convert it. This, this is the main customer panel with this tree structure on the left, and it has um, a master detail relationship over here on the right, has things like list of values and um, uh, drop-down uh, panels, all standard kind of components that you would expect to see in your Oracle Forms application. This is the second form, which is the order information. So that's what we're starting with. That, like I said, that's the, or the Summit application running under Forms 6i. And if I just minimize that, um, this then is the um, Exodus is our converter tool that actually converts um, Oracle Forms, any version of Forms from 6i um, upward to 10G or 11 um, over to Java, anything prior to 6i. Um, we do kind of a two-step process. We, we upgrade it to 6i, and then we take it over to Java. So this is the main user interface. Um, there are a few options that are available, um, whether we're actually converting classes that are in our database and whether we want them converted to EG, EJBs, um, whether we're using actual reference forms. Um, uh, some some forms applications allow you to use reference forms to set things like visual attributes and business logic so that other forms in the application can reference it. So a few options that you can set. All of these other uh, components that you see on the user interface, input directory, output directory, database connection info, all of this information is supplied through a configurable configuration file. So I can set it in advance of running the actual conversion so that I don't have to set it or, or manually enter it every time I come into the conversion. So, and the other choice here is just uh, the presentation layer type. We have a couple of choices. Do we convert to just a standard uh, plug-in version, which is an actual applet? Do we convert to the Oracle ADS Faces version, which produces um, pure HTML pages. A couple of choices. The conversion process in either case is exactly the same. So then I go ahead and I start the conversion. I've identified um, where it is that um, my input files are for this particular conversion. So I'm going to start with the libraries, the PLSQL libraries, of course, all of the common business logic routines that are used. Um, within the application. In this particular application, we have a couple of libraries. You'll note that those are um, a PLD extensions on them. In other words, we take the original binary files, the, the .pll's, and we create text files from them using the um, Oracle Forms uh, Builder to, um, there's a, a convert option within that that allows us to take those binary modules create them to text, use the text files then as the input to the converter. And you'll see here a conversion report. So every time I go through this conversion process, I get a log of what got converted, um, was it successful. Um, if it had failed, I'd have a message that said um, where the failure happened, what line number, in what file. So it's just a really a, a status report of how things how things turned out. There's also a copy that's created on file on disk so that you can go back and look at that later. So you always have a record of what's been converted. If you're converting a huge application with many, many forms and many libraries, you may choose to do that in a in a, a groups of subsets. So um, you always want to have a log of what's been done to date. The next step is I'm just grabbing the um, there's one menu module in this particular application. So I'm just going to convert it. Again, I get this standard report. 
And then uh, finally, I, I choose to convert the actual forms. And as we said, there's actually three forms out here in the summit application. Matt was pointing them out for us when the uh, when we looked at the um, just that screenshot of the structure, and we'll see it again um, once this application is deployed. I'll show you in JDeveloper how these um, sources look and uh, the actual structure of them. So we'll just go ahead and we'll convert these three forms. As Matt said, this is not a huge application. It's relatively small. So this, this conversion process, you know, we'll have the entire application, the three different modules, types, um, libraries, menus, and forms. We'll have them all converted within just a matter of a few minutes here. The final step of any conversion process is to take all of the generated code and uh, to create a WAR file, uh, an actual web archive file. And it's that WAR file then that we take and we deploy on um, whatever application server you happen to be using. Um, we support um, that WAR file at the standard format, so it can be deployed on any application server that actually supports a Java WAR file. So today, in, in this example, we're just using Tomcat. Uh, you can use Oracle Application Server. You can use WebLogic anything that supports the Java um, WAR file. So that's, that's the conversion process. It's a very straightforward, very simple process. That's the automatic or the automated portion of it. Once, once, that's, once that's finished and the WAR file is created, I'm just going to go ahead. I just have already started the application so that you can see it just um, in the essence of time. Uh, this is the actual Summit application that's now been um, converted to Java. It's taken a minute to come up here. And then I'll, I'll bring up both the um, original Summit application running under Form 6i and um, this Java application so that you can see the two kind of in a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me just bring up this. Okay, so the Forms application is here in the top left corner and this this application here on the bottom right is the, is the converted application so very comparable in how they look this tree structure this same um, kind of master detail relationship in these blocks here on the right um, the tab component all of that is supported with the automated um, conversion feature Things are a little bit, um, you see a little different, um, some of the fonts are a little bit different, colors are a little bit different, but really the, the functionality is um, almost identical. Um, the look and feel, I mean, you could put this new application in front of a user and um, there's really no uh, training required or any learning curve. It, it, it looks a little bit different, they'll know something happened, but it, it really functionality, look and feel is the same with this plug-in version. So that's what it looks like. That's the conversion process. And if we go back then to JDeveloper, the Summit plug-in application, this, this, is the, this is the application that I just showed you running. So again, in the essence of time, I didn't actually take the WAR file. I had actually taken it previously and deployed it into JDeveloper. And this is the structure that you see. Um, all of the business logic is contained in this folder called Application Sources. All of the uh, user presentation layer is, con is contained within this Web Content folder. So, uh, and again, this is, a, this is a consistent structure. Every application that you convert will have this. This is just the um, application name, Sports Co. But here's the three different module types that we converted, libraries, menus, and then Summit was the uh, just the name that we gave the application, so we use that for the forms. Here are the three form forms that we talked about. And again, if we just expand this out a little bit, um, as Matt showed in the, in the one uh, particular um, screenshot in the presentation, there's the customer form. Within the form are all the blocks. And at each one of these block levels are the items. At each of these three levels, there are Java classes there. 
This structure is um, almost identical to what you see in the Oracle Forms builder side. So again, in the in the in order to support making these converted applications as easy as possible to maintain, um, we've purposely um, retained this structure so that um, someone coming in as an Oracle Forms developer moving to the Java world, so they'll at least be familiar with the structure and where they find things. You know, items are always within the blocks. And if I bring up, um, let me just go to the source tab here so you can see this. So now on the right here, this is this is the actual Java class um, created. Um, this is customers.java, so this is at the form level for the customers form. One of the things that you will always see at the start of every one of these Java classes that's created is this set of import statements. And again, um, I refer to this when he talked about the Express library in the presentation. Those are those common routines that um, the developers here at Cypressoft Unify have um, actually created. They're the pieces that actually emulate the Oracle Forms runtime. So they're all contained within these libraries here. And so, and again, it's not proprietary code. It's code that you receive as part of a license so that you can maintain it. But they're all contained within these, these express libraries. And again, if I just scroll down a little bit, you'll see that all of the source code that's generated here, always, always a consistent structure. It sets the properties at the beginning, then alerts, and then moves down into the actual converted um, business logic. This is actual PL SQL that's been converted. And you'll see things like where it's setting um, triggers and, and uh, what to execute when the trigger gets executed. Um, again, as Matt mentioned, all of the nomenclature, it's all, all of these procedure names, all of the trigger names, um, all identical to what they were, or they're all retained from the Oracle Forms application. Um, we do remove the hyphens out of them, but other than that, you will recognize these names. And again, that's done um, on purpose so that it's, um, it's familiar for um, someone who's been doing maintenance on these applications. Um, even though they may not know Java as well, they um, certainly can look at this code and, uh, and find their way through it and find the code. Um, it just increases the readability of it. So that's um, an actual Java class at the form level. And all of these, if I even drill down just a little bit here, this is down at the um, this tree cut item again. Uh, starts with the import statements, sets the properties, Sorry, this is at the block level, and then goes into the actual um, converted PL SQL. So that's what the generated uh, code looks like. Obviously, I have this in um, JDeveloper. Um, again, you can use any IDE that supports um, the Java classes. Uh, we, we happen to use um, JDeveloper here in-house, but all of these classes can be maintained. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to show you quickly um, the actual uh, visual editor. And this is, um, this can be, I, I actually ran this um, just standalone, but it can actually be added as a um, plugin to JDeveloper if that's what you're using. So it would run from this uh, tools menu here. But what you see here then is the actual this is the first canvas in the Summit application, the, um, the main canvas under the customer's form. And so each of these components, you'll see a, this is a, a, a palette editor here for each of these. And so I can grab, like, customer phone. Um, I can grab this button. I can move it around. Now I've got the whole block here. Sorry, Oop, I'm sliding out of the block. But it's a, basically it's a, what you would call a WYSIWYG editor, right? What you see is what you get. So you can drag these, you can move them around. I can pick these um, components in the in the palette editor. I can add. I can add buttons. 
Um, it just, it's just an easier way of, of editing just the look, just the presentation layer. So presentation layer can be modified here in the visual editor, and the business logic, of course, has to be maintained in the actual Java classes. So just one more time back to the, the J developer. So there's a very um, clean split. If you're looking for code, if you're trying to maintain it, Again, all of the business logic is here in the application sources folder. And all of the presentation layer files, if I drill down here a little bit, you'll see in this particular case, these are the JLS files. And these are the actual, um, let this one open here. In this particular case, because it's a plugin version, um, these are actual XML files. So this is the source code of it. Uh, what you see in the visual editor is the is how it, it has, sorry, the visual editor um, gives you the visual representation of it. This is the actual source code that sits in behind that. So that's, that's really the two pieces of, um, of, of the code that's generated, and that's how they're split out for fairly clean, um, um, a, a clean split makes it a little bit easier when you're when you're off to maintain the application to give you an idea of where it is you need, what what needs to be changed. And then, of course, within this environment, you would make the changes. You compile, and um, you know there's a an iterative loop of making changes and testing and and coming back and possibly making more changes. But um, that's that's really how it works within um, the Exodus converter. So, Matt, that's really what I wanted to show this morning. Um, is there anything else that, that you would like me to show that I that you may have mentioned that I may have missed? No, I, I, you covered the things I wanted you to do, which is kind of show the uh, show the how easy it is to convert, and then um, go in and look at the business logic code so they could see how how it's structured and how it can be maintained, and then the presentation layer. So, what we'll do is uh, we'll go back to the um, slides here and uh, we'll uh, do the Q&A. So again, for the um, Q&A, uh, use the button in your WebEx toolbar with the question mark. We'll uh, go silent here for about 30 seconds or so to let you get, give you a chance to post your questions. Then uh, Lorraine and I will come back on and we'll start reading through the questions and answering them. All right, well, we're back on. We're going to go ahead and start um, going through the questions. And uh, the first question, I think, was already answered by our administrator, but could I get a copy of this presentation? Uh, the answer to that is yes, absolutely. In fact, what, we're, what we'll do, just so everybody knows here, is um, we, record, we do these webinars monthly, and we, we record them. So a recorded version of the presentation with the demo will be available on our website, um, it'll probably be the end of this week when this will, you'll be able to find this on our website. And if you need the, if you have any trouble finding it, 
um, just contact your Unify representative and they can uh, send you the link for it. But if you go to cypressoftinc.com and uh, you, you'll be able to find it under there. Um, there's a section for the webinars. Next question. We would like to see uh, that application run. So referring to the summit, uh, the converted summit application. I don't know. Do we have time? I don't know if, if we have time or not. And if you have uh, an application server set up to to deploy it, do, do we, Lorraine, or is that something we'll just have to do for them as a as a one off later? Oh, actually, I, I, and I had actually started it. I just brought up the first form, but I can just walk through it quickly. If you um, well, can turn it back to me, Matt, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, let's take a minute and do that. Okay. We'll, we'll turn it over to you uh, right now. So what, what we'll do here is, you know, we showed you the converted summit application, and we were in J Developer showing you the the um, business logic, and then we were uh, showing you through the WYSIWYG editor how you could um, uh, work with the presentation layer without having to actually go in and, and you know code it changes. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll deploy the converted application here. Yeah. This is the actual generated, uh, this is the converted application here. This is the main customer form. So I can just drill down through this. Um, this will yeah, while she, while she does, does that, what we're doing is this just gets deployed as a WAR file to the application server. Yeah, so this, this is the second form then. So one more level, and that brings up the third form. That that really is the entire application, just those three forms. And obviously, the the library routines are in behind. I can just scroll down through here. Added the ski boot. So this is the, this is the actual application running. This is running in an actual. Uh, this is it running in a browser. Actually started browser. Um, it will also run just as a standalone application from a batch file. Or as I said, um, when I when I ran the conversion itself, the second choice. There's a couple of choices of both the presentation layer. This this particular. Um, plug-in version, or the other option is the uh, pure HTML ADS basis um, option, and so that would run in a browser as well. So th this is the application running. All right. We'll go ahead and switch back over. So I, I have to, we have to switch back over so I can see the, uh, the rest of the questions to, to read through. Um, next question. We would like to know about ADF Web because I think the application is desktop, no? Well, I think Lorraine actually just kind of touched on that. What we showed the, uh, the deployed application layer, the deployed application, the presentation layer option we were showing was a browser option, um, although the browser option is include, is that it has a lightweight plugin. The Java desktop version would look very similar. Um, and then the presentation layer, that option that we didn't show was having the presentation layer in ADF faces. And uh, we're not going to go back and show that uh, here for today. Um, having ADF set up on our demo uh, thing is, is just a little more involved to try and show all of that. Next question. The Exodus Layout Editor is an IDE. Uh, does it come together with the conversion program? So uh, the layout editor, it's, also, it's called the visual um, editor. It is an add-on option to, to the uh, conversion tool. So, the, and, and actually, it brings up another question, and that is, so the conversion, the automated conversion tool you saw is, is part of the composer family. It's called Exodus. And um, Exodus can be licensed by customers if they want to do the conversion themselves, and that includes a conversion tool as well as that analyzer that Lorraine mentioned for actually um, looking at, you know, you can run your application through the analyzer to see what will convert, what won't, and, and really come up with a, 
a, um, a good estimate before you even start the conversion of, of what kind of effort will be involved. Uh, so, so the customer can license that tool. Uh, when they do that, we um, uh, sell a five-day training um, engagement to train you on the tool so that you uh, can be proficient with it. And five days training is all that is needed. Uh, and we offer that at uh, two of our locations as well as at the customer site. Um, or we also offer the conversion as a service. For some folks, um, they are looking to have someone perform the conversion for them. So we do that as well as a service, although we use this actually this tool. Um, and because of the analyzer and what the tool does, uh, because it does it so well, we actually will give you a fixed price um, engagement for the, uh, the automated conversion part. Okay, next question. Um, thanks. Uh, EJB version, Java version. Uh, what are you doing for database connectivity? Is it JDBC or pooling? Is there an ORM layer? So a couple questions in there. Uh, first of all, on the Java version, we support uh, both JDK 1.5 and 1.6. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Lorraine. No, that's right, Matt. You're right. All right. I'm one for one so far. Uh, on the EJB version, do you know what EJB uh -huh. version supports? I, I believe it's 1.2. Okay. And also, um, and this, I don't know if this is going down a, a path here or not, but on the EJB uh, version or along the lines of that question, we can actually, um, the business logic, you know, I wish I, I don't have the architecture slide in this presentation, Lorraine, but remind me, I know there's a choice of the, uh, is it the stored procedure logic in the database can be, you, you have a choice. We, we recommend keeping it in the database for performance reasons, but if you're looking to pull that, uh, bus pull that business logic, if you will, out of the database so that you can build more of a abstract um, uh, layer uh, so that other folks can use it, you, this has the ability to convert that that into EJBs. Am I describing that well enough? That, that is correct. Um, you have the choice actually to pull those stored procedures and either yeah, convert them to EJBs or you can just convert them to straight Java classes as well. And uh, that would give you then the ability to move to a, you know, if you were moving from an Oracle database to something else, that would give you that option. Uh, but otherwise, as Matt said, uh, we typically recommend leaving them. If you're if you're staying with your your Oracle database, if you leave them in the database, you'll have better performance from the um, generated application. And and yes, we're just using standard JDBC drivers to connect to the database. Great. Um, the uh, on the database connectivity, are we using JDBC? Yes. And then, Standard JDBC drivers. And then he asked about pooling. I don't know if that's an alternative to JDBC or. No, there is some there is some shared pooling that goes on. It's a it's actually something that's configurable um, within within the um, the product once you set it up, whether you use the shared pooling or not. Okay, and then is there an ORM or ORM layer? Is that object request manager? I'm not sure. What the yeah, I don't know what that is either. I, I've heard of it. I, I, I'm just not, uh, um, I guess, well versed enough in it. So we may need some additional explanation there, or we can do a, we can follow up with you with uh, one of our more technical folks um, who could probably have a meaningful discussion with you on it. But if, if you want to clarify the ORM layer. Um, or what you're trying to get to behind that question, we're more than happy to try and answer it further here before we end the session. All right, that's all the questions that we have at this point. Oh, hold on. The administrator's pointing something else to me. Oh, someone's, someone's posting a question on chat, and someone has their cell phone too close to the phone also. We're getting a little feedback from someone's cell phone or BlackBerry being a little close to the phone. Um, Someone posted a question on, on chat, so uh, but, but luckily we found it. So what is the main difference with other programs to offer migration forms to Java? So a little bit of English as a second language here. Um, 
So they're asking what's, what's the main distinction or difference with our automated conversion versus other ones out there. Uh, you know, when I, uh, I'm going to answer this based on what I've heard from our customers uh, who have looked at the different solutions. I, I, I haven't kept up to date lately just because um, I, I don't run into too many out there. T typically, the people are more in the um, mode of they look at us for automated conversion because of our involvement with Oracle and the OMA um, and and our endor the endorsement from Oracle of us. They're looking at us versus, okay, is it time to convert or do we um, migrate up or, um, you know, do we do a rewrite? So typically we have those types of questions. But the ones that do look at the other solutions out there, uh, typically what they find the main distinction of us from the others is that we offer a complete conversion of the business logic and the presentation layer and all of those things in the forms application that we talk about, the menus, the libraries, the triggers. We, we convert it all. Um, most of the things that you look out that you look at out there are offering. Well, we convert. We have a tool that converts the presentation layer, or it converts some of the business logic. But then we have, you know, we'll, we'll sell you a bunch of services to, to finish it out. We're the only ones that offer a a a complete tool that automates the conversion of all the different pieces. Now, as I mentioned, there are some constructs that aren't suitable to automated conversion. And, uh, but we have an analyzer that catches all of that, and that's probably the other uh, distinction that our solution offers. Um, just to follow on, guessing that it is straight JDBC, not using something like TopLink. That's that's a true straight. That, that's a true statement. It is just JDBC. Um, that whole layer, you know, when the when the when Exodus was designed, it was designed so that it created or generated the code in um, kind of three distinct layers, right? The presentation layer, the business logic, and the data access. And one of the reasons that it was developed to be in those three distinct layers was that 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 will allow for um, any one of those layers really to be swapped out with something else. So if you wanted to use TopLink for data access instead of JDBC drivers, um, you, with it would take some product development, but it would be a limited amount. We could actually swap that layer out and use TopLink or other data access methods. Okay. Great. Um, there was one other person um, out of Brazil that was asking Lorraine for your email to ask uh, some follow-up technical questions. Um, what we'll do is uh, we'll send you the appropriate contact information. We have your email address. We actually have uh, partners in Brazil who um, are probably best equipped, but um, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll get with Lorraine and we'll see who's the right person to have you follow up with on your technical questions and get you their contact information. It, it may be Lorraine, I don't know yet, but because we have partners down in South America, um, we may have someone in your own time zone and own language um, that has uh, expertise uh, to answer your questions. All right, well, what we're gonna do is go ahead and wrap it up now. That's, that's all the questions that we have at this point. So um, Lorraine and I wanna thank you for your participation today. We hope you found uh, the, the um, the webinar of value and answered some questions for you um, and gave you some things to think about. Uh, in summary, some things to take away from what you saw today is that um, for maintaining uh, Oracle Forms applications converted, we have a solution that maintains the structure and hierarchy of the orig original Forms application to really help ease that maintenance or maintaining the application once it's converted. And as you saw when we walked through it, it's very clean, uh, converted Java code. And you get all of the, it's all Java, pure J2EE solution. You get all of that to maintain and extend without any dependency on us, um, including that, uh, um, uh, those express libraries, which is that, that Oracle Forms framework equivalent, if you will, in Java. Um, and the great news is you don't have to build all of that from scratch. 
This lets you really focus on converting your application. When you exit out of the webinar, you will get a uh, quick little survey. It takes about 30 seconds to do. Please give us your feedback. Did you like this? Is it what you expected? Are there additional things you'd like to know? Um, and are there future webinar topics um, around conversion to Java that you'd like to hear about? We use that feedback to drive these very topics that we do in these monthly webinars. And with that, um, we're going to wrap this up. The one thing I want to mention is if you are going to any of these Oracle events, uh, there's a chance to see us in person. And uh, please stop by and talk to us. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about what you're doing. And, um, uh, and if we can help you out in any way, we'd love to. We're going to be at ODTUG in D.C. at the end of June. And, we'll, of course, we'll be at Oracle Open World um, in San Francisco in September. Thanks, and uh, have a great